And welcome back. From overcoming the challenges of a disenfranchised upbringing to becoming the beacon of inspiration for countless others, our next guest has dedicated his career to helping people conquer self-doubt as well as embrace their full potential. He's actually created and authored a self-help book offering profound insights into overcoming self-limiting beliefs and embracing the power of self-confidence. Joining me now is the author of The Audacity of Doubt, Otis D. Gore, and congratulations. Thank you, my man. What's Good up, Good to man? have you, man. I've been watching this guy for a long time. I've been on for a long time. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> How's it going, man? I, I'm good. How are you, man? I mean, it's it's got to be a great feeling. The book is, I mean, the book is being released, and yes, here sir. we go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, hopefully, looking forward to great things. And um, I wanted to put this out there because I know that everyone, everyone says there's a book in everybody, which is true. You just got to push through, and you got to actually put in the process to actually bring it to fruition. Right. So here we are talking about the audacity of doubt. What made you focus on doubt? So... All my life, I've always been put in a position of like leadership or mentorship or coaching. So everyone always came to me for advice. I don't know why, <laughs> but they did. And um, I always thought to myself, you know what? I, I realized that a lot of people that I talk to want to do things in their lives, but they don't take the step. They, they're more intrigued by it. So I always tell them there's a difference between being intrigued, believing you can do it, and truly believing you can do it. So when you're intrigued by something, there's a lot of things that you're intrigued about. So you would say, hey, that looked cool, that looked cool, that looked cool, but am I willing to take some steps? And then you get to the point where you might believe you could do something. And then when you start to believe it, you take a couple of steps, some adversity comes, and then you're like, mm, maybe it's not for me. But then there's that point where you truly believe you could do something, where you get knocked down, you look up, you see the ceiling, you get right back up. That's when you know. That's when you push through the fear and you push through the doubt, and you're really going towards your destiny. In the book, you conquer talking about imposter syndrome. Yes. And I think for our viewers, it's important for them to know how, what is imposter syndrome because I think that so many people are paralyzed by it. Yeah. Don't even know it. Sometimes what happens is when we got put into a place or a room or a situation or an opportunity, we feel like we don't belong there. Mm -hmm. We feel like an imposter. We feel like, wow, why did this happen to me? But what they don't understand, what people don't understand is whatever you did previously in your life, whatever you put forth, might have got you there, because everything is about the choices that you make. So the other day, someone was asking me, I feel like I should be somewhere else in your life. And I told them, you are exactly where you should be, because that's where you are. Mm -hmm. If you want to be someplace else, then you got to, in order to go someplace you've never been before, you got to become somebody you've never been before. So you got to look at yourself, because the most important relationship you could have is with yourself. One of the topics that you talked about that really got me was the talk about vulnerability. Yeah. Because I think so many people don't embrace it. Right. You're encouraging people to embrace vulnerability. Why? So a lot of things that goes on, especially where we come from in our lives, are, we're destitute, we come from a place of dis disenchantment and everything. And you have to embrace everything that's coming your way. Even the things that you don't believe, may not have came your way or just came in, mm -hmm. but you also got to embrace the things that you're actually going to pursue. Because what happens with a lot of people's thought process is they get used to certain habits, and those habits keep them in a certain space. So I always tell people, you don't create your future, you create good habits, and those habits create your future. And one thing that we can't do is live in the past, because the past don't live in the future, only unless you live there. That's powerful. Yeah, well, I try to be. Hey, listen, <laughs> it's all in the book. It's uh, all in the book. Otis D. Gore's book. book is called The Audacity of Doubt. Yes. And when you talk about doubt, what really brought you to the place of saying, doubt is what I'm going to focus on? So I wanted to focus on doubt because it's, I call it audacity because it's the nerve of the feeling to stop you every time you want to do something. There are people now, there's people watching, there's people in the studio that may not be where they want to be, they, but they got a thought on where they would like to be, but they're afraid to take that step. Right. There's a, a saying that says, I'd rather die leaping in fear than to constantly stand on the edge and wonder what could have been. So you have to go there. When I put this book together, that was my thought. I was like, Otis, you always told yourself, hey, I could do a book. I'd like to do a book. Well, why not just do it? And even myself had a little bit of doubt. Eh, what if nobody buy it? I just went for it. It was a long process, but I went for it. How long a process? I started writing this book probably two years ago. Okay. <laughs> yeah, probably two years ago. I just thought so. Sometimes when I go on a morning run, 
I have this thing in my phone called book notes. Mm -hmm. And I might think of something and be like, oh, stop, put it in. Right. Then there it goes. That's really, it came to fruition. So before I knew it, I had 13 chapters. And there it is. And there it is. So when, yeah, and so our, of course our cameras got the, the cover, but for you, how much did doubt kick in in this process? Um, the doubt kicked in what well, in this process when I didn't have anything to write. There was a time when I didn't write anything for like a month, two months, and I'm saying to myself, what am I going to do? Like, why do I even start? And then all of a sudden, I just get inspired by something, and then I just go, 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 go. And then I'll, get a, I'll hear someone speak, and they'll say something, a word, or a phrase, and I'd be like, hey, I, I could write about that. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. So there's um, stories, there's quotes. Every quote that's in the book, it's, I give the person who did the quote, I give them the credit, of course, because it's not all me. Right. I wish it was, but it's not all <laughs> me. But um, that, my doubt came from the fact that, hey, if I'm going to tell you to push through for uh, full limited beliefs to live your best life, and I'm not even trying to push through to get the book out, how would I look? I look hypocritical. Right. You know, so I push, push, push to get the book to this point. And it's self-published, so I started my own publishing company, the Kalo Press, to put the book out. And I appreciate being here with this gentleman here. I've watched this guy for a long time. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I know he's not a giant fan, so good. <laughs> that's right. Philly all the way, baby. Eagles. Philly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the quarterback. Yeah. All right. That's right. You got to like the quarterback. Like the quarterback. <laughs> but... I want, to get to, I want to get to this point here because you talk about pushing through, right? Pushing through. But also in the book, you also talk about leveling up. Yes. So pushing through, leveling up, yeah. make it make sense. So what a lot of people do, I call it living in your settlement. Mm. People live in their settlement, meaning whatever you're doing in your life, that's not what you set out to do. That's not what your goal is. That's not what wakes you up every morning. But you settle for it because your bills are paid, you, you got a roof over your head. I'm okay. It's easy to just get settled in. But yet... Only one a certain percentage of people actually push to live the life they truly believe mm -hmm. that they're supposed to live. Most of us don't. Most of us succumb to the pressure. And we may be okay, and yeah, I got a job, I'm this, I'm whatever I'm doing, it pays the bills, but that gets you settled, that gets you complacent. Mm -hmm. You know, and you don't want to be complacent when you're trying to reach for a goal. You know, and that's what I mean, living in your settlement. You got to really push out of that. There's a phrase that says, you can't see the frame if you're still in the picture. You got to step outside the box. For people who want to get this book, what do you hope that they take away when they read it? Um, I hope that they take away the thought process of really, really striving and really grinding. And the way that I wrote the book is I wrote it in chapters. Like, the first chapter is about time. You never know how much time you got. The second chapter is to begin. You got to begin. The hardest thing to do is to begin. And then the next chapter is about mindset. You got to have the correct mindset to push through. And then the next chapter is about growth and then fear. And so everything goes. So what they can do is use it as a reference. So, for example, if you're having an issue with value, your value, then you can, there's, a, there's a, a, a section on value. You go back and read the value section. If, you know, I got to get my time together, like how much time I got, you go back and read time. So you can use it like that. So, you talked about the concept of gentrification, uh, gamification, I should say, you know, in personal development. Right. I, I want you to just elaborate a little bit about that. About what, what's the question? It's the concept of gamification in personal development. Yeah. So, it's, hard, it's, it's, it's crazy because this particular genre, personal development, there, it stems on somebody or someone or people always trying to get better every day. Like I said in the mm -hmm. beginning, your most important relationship you have in your life is the one you have with yourself. You know, you look in the mirror, just like the old African proverb, there's no enemy within, the enemy outside could do you no harm, right? I always agree, I always believe that people need to try to get as good as they can every day to try to become the best person you can be. If someone asks you, hey, damn it, how you doing today? Trying to be better than the day before. Right. That's what you say, right? right? I'm always trying to be better than the day before. And I, if, if I know that... I have to show and prove. If I'm telling you what to do, then I got to be myself that person. I got to be that vision that you say, oh, you know what? I see Otis is doing something. Let me see what's going on. When I go for a morning run, and sometimes I'll jog and I'll jog by a bus stop, you don't never know who you're influencing. You never mm -hmm. know. Somebody might be like, they might see me run and be like, oh, I got to get back in the gym. <laughs> yeah. Or I got to get back running. You know, you, you never know. You know, I, I went to a transformation myself because I came down, I, I was like, 275 pounds or so. 
275. I was a big guy. I was a big guy. But when I did my total transformation, I, I ate healthy, worked out for a while, long time, grew a beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So did a lot of stuff. Right. You know, I just kind of did a whole 360. In order for me to do that 360, you know, I had to really push and really truly believe I can actually get there. And that was the whole part. I, I know you mentioned earlier to the guy in the first segment, uh, you said you got to be optimistic. Right. Right. It's a true statement. I actually have an acronym that I came up with my name, O-T-I-S, Otis. Mm -hmm. And that is optimistic thoughts inspire success. Wow. Okay. And that's Otis. So when you said that, I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Optimi I mean, optimism is huge. But optimism. also, optimism is also the enemy of doubt, right? Yeah, well, yeah, so... Well, doubt is the enemy of It optimism, is, it right? is, so that, and that's a good point, and that's the reason why optim you got to stay optimistic, you know, because we all going to have doubt, even now today. Mm -hmm. Even me, even, I wrote this book and, and, and wanted to do well, but there's still some things that I may have some doubt about, you know, but I still got to push it. If it's something I truly believe I want, then I got to go. I got to push through, and that's what everybody should do. You got to push through. Because I know most people these days are not actually living the life that they truly believe that they should. Yeah. Well, it's been a pleasure having you. Thank you, sir. You got to come me. back, man. I will come back, man. Listen, we'll unpack this some more and then I'll maybe another book, too. And yeah, this absolutely. Is, what, is that in the future or what? Yeah, absolutely. I, I know wanna, you got to get through this wanna, first phase this right thing. here, but yeah, once then you I, get the first one out. Yes, I'm, I'm going to call it the audacity of Damon Jaime telling me to write another book. There it is. <laughs> you heard it here first. When it comes out, tell him he got inspired right he here. He got inspired right here. That's it. Otis D. Gore, author of The Audacity of Doubt. Now, listen, if you want more information, visit the website at otisdgoreauthor.com. We encourage you, don't go anywhere. We got more open coming up right after this. Congratulations again. Thank you, brother. sir. Appreciate yes, sir. you. Yes, sir. Appreciate you.